thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura or TTP is the topic for this video and TTP is a very interesting uh, medical condition and it results from the deficiency of an enzyme and it's either inherited or acquired and that protease enzyme is known as ADAMTS13 and essentially this is an enzyme and it's faulty in TTP now this enzyme is normally involved in blood clotting and when it's faulty what happens is that you have an increase an overactive when it's faulty you have an overactive amount of blood clotting so that's the essential etiology now the unfortunate part about TTP is that it can affect not only the blood but it can also affect the kidneys and the central nervous system so the symptomatology is known as a classic pentad and what that means is that there's five things that happen one two three four five and there's a nice mnemonic that I've used fat nurse fat RN and the F is for fever the A is for anemia and in particular it's a hemolytic anemia the, the T is for thrombocytopenia low platelets the R is for renal disease renal failure and the N is for neurologic abnormalities and this classic pentad is very important uh, now the neurologic abnormalities are very uh, important because uh, that's sort of the predominant uh, feature of TTP and because it's the predominant feature it's a uh, very classic in clinical vignettes 90 percent of TTP cases have altered mental status So that's a very important uh, aspect of uh, the identification of TTP in a clinical vignette. Now, what's very important is that there's another medical condition that has pretty much the same classic pentad, and that other medical condition is hemolytic uremic syndrome. Now, what happens on uh, licensing exams is that they'll give you a clinical scenario and then they'll give you in the answer choices both TTP and HUS and then you get confused as to which one is it so fortunately there are some ways to figure out is it hemolytic uremic syndrome or is it TTP so I wanted to talk a little bit about that now some of the things that you can use to differentiate is adults usually are described as getting TTP. HUS is children. Another thing uh, that's very important which I touched on is the predominance of uh, neurologic symptoms such as uh, altered mental status is more common in TTP. Now what's more common in uh, HUS is a predominance of renal failure. A renal disease more severe and then one other thing that can help you um, differentiate is that HUS hemolytic uremic syndrome scenarios often are caused by some uh, sort of E. coli uh, infection an E. coli diarrhea illness as a preceding factor so those are some of the things that you can use to differentiate between TTP and HUS because the the classic pentad is the same in both uh, medical conditions so diagnosis a lot of tests of course CBC that detect the anemia 
and detect the low platelet count. BUN and creatinine, of course, will give you an ind indication of the renal involvement. And uh, there's a lot of other tests, but there's one very important one that kind of gives you a, a real clue is the peripheral blood smear. This is a very important uh, diagnostic feature because it'll show something that is very characteristic and that is schistocytes, schistocytosis. If you see that on a peripheral blood smear, that's a very uh, strong uh, indicator of TTP. So what is the treatment? How do you treat TTP? Well, the treatment is something called plasma exchange. And then that is exchanged with fresh frozen plasma. And I'll explain what this is. Uh, this is also known as plasmapheresis. So what, what is this? What's going on? Plasma exchange basically is uh, the removal of large volumes of plasma from the patient's blood. And then it's replaced with donated fresh frozen plasma. Plasmapheresis essentially is the same thing, but it's the removal of small amounts of plasma. And because the amounts of plasma that removed are small, there's no, re no need to have any replacement. Now some questions, what they'll say is large volume plasmapheresis. We'll use that term. And that essentially is the same as plasma exchange. So what exactly is happening? If you do this, why does it treat uh, TTP? Well, because when you remove uh, plasma from the patient's blood, what you're doing essentially is removing the antibodies that are actually damaging that enzyme, that main enzyme that I talked about earlier. So that's why you're doing that. You're removing the bad guys. You're removing the antibodies that are damaging that important gene or enzyme. And then when you replace um, the fresh frozen plasma, when you give fresh frozen plasma that's been donated, what that does is it replaces the enzyme, the ADAMTS13 enzyme. So you give uh, normal uh, enzymes that work properly. You remove the faulty ones by removing the large volumes of plasma and then when you give the fresh frozen plasma you're replacing um, the normal uh, enzyme, the enzymes that are actually working. So that's essentially plasmapheresis. So you take out the bad and you put in the good. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes here. 35-year-old woman presents to her physician with blood in her urine. She has also felt malaise and a fever for the past day. She has inconsistent answers to further questioning due to altered mental status. She is somnolent and confused. Her past medical history is unremarkable. She does not take any meds, does not drink alcohol or smoke. On physical exam, blood pressure is 122, pulse is 89. She is oxygenating 97%. Head and neck exam reveals mild scleral ictus. There's no JVD. Lungs are clear. There are no murmurs. Abdomen has no ascites or hepatosplenomegaly. Peripheral exam reveals a petechial rash, but no clubbing, cyanosis, or edema. Lab values show. Uh, shows anemia. Shows low plaque count. Elevated BUN creatinine. On the peripheral blood smear, smear, schistocytes are noted. Which of the following is most likely etiology for the patient's symptoms? Well, let's see. Let's see if we have our classic pentad in this question. Well, she's got the fever. 
so we have that. She has the anemia, so we have that. Uh, low platelet count, so we have the thrombocytopenia. And the BUN creatinine is elevated, so we have the renal disease. And then she has altered mental status, so we have the neurologic abnormalities. Abnormalities. So we definitely have all the uh, scenario of uh, TTP. Now, remember, HUS also has the classic pentad. So let's see what the answer choices are. Well, we have TTP. Well, we also have HUS. So we have to figure out which one is it. Well, fortunately, in this question, there's a couple clues. The BUN and creatinine are elevated, but they're mildly elevated. So it's not severe. And then the altered mental status, because she's giving inconsistent answers, she's somnolent and confused, that really uh, is predominating in her presentation. And that really strongly suggests that it, it is TTP. So that would be choice D. And then finally, a 33-year-old woman is brought to the emergency department accompanied by her husband. Her husband reports that he has, she has periodic episodes of confusion that quickly resolve. He also reports that she's been extremely weak and fatigued over the past four or five days. Temperature is 102. Uh, blood pressure is 140 over 70. Uh, pulse is 103. And respirations are 18. Physical exam shows jaundice skin, mild scleral icterus. She has a systolic ejection murmur. And she has one plus edema in her lower extremities. Lab studies show anemia, thrombocytopenia, elevated BM and creatinine. Peripheral smear shows hemolysis with few platelets. Most appropriate next step is? Well, again, um, we've got fever. We've got anemia. We've got thrombocytopenia. We've got the elevated BM and creatinine for the renal disease. And the neurologic exam does show Confusion. In fact, that's the reason she was brought in. So she's got the classic pentad, and she's got TTP. And the peripheral smear def definitely gives you an indication of that also. So the treatment, of course, is plasma exchange, and in particular, removing large amounts of plasma from the blood. And when you do that, it removes the antibodies from the blood that damage that important ADAMTS13 enzyme. And then when you do plasma exchange, you're taking out the plasma from the patient's blood, but you're replacing it with fresh frozen plasma that's been donated. And in that fresh frozen plasma is uh, ADAM TS13 enzyme that is functioning normally. So you're taking out the bad stuff and you're putting in the good enzyme. And that is done via large volume plasmapheresis. So I hope that all made sense.